Permit me to introduce myself. I'm Chris Lopez, and I speak to you as the head of Texas Soto Karate. I want to welcome you to a brief look into the art of Texas Soto Karate as practiced by my followers for the past 48 years. You will see in this video a junior black belt exam for two students of one of my black belts, Mr. Johnny Copado, third down, given in 1995. The two examining were Ronan Hackney, then age 10, and Jordan Gomez, age 12. I presided over the exam board. Also on the board were three of my black belts, Mr. Jimmy Santayan, then a fourth Don, J. Scott Council, a third Don, and Mr. John Copado, then a second Don. Mr. Santayan, who served as the ring judge, succumbed to illness a few years later. He is missed. Given the fact that I'm passing the baton of leadership to my senior black belt, Mr. Jeff Benugli, I felt this video would serve to demonstrate what was in the past and allow Mr. Benugli to give you some idea of what is future. Also speaking to you from the video will be another of my black belts, a man in whom I repose great trust, Mr. Samuel Chalico, sixth Don. Mr. Chalico represented me well as one of my full contact team fighters. Please permit me to tell you a little bit about myself. I began my training with Joe Alvarado in April of 1967. I had just graduated from the Austin Police Academy. Mr. Alvarado will tell you that I had much to do with him becoming involved with that department and eventually becoming a much respected defensive tactics instructor there. There was no such respect for him in the beginning. Having a good understanding of what it takes to make your reputation, I was determined to change that. On a department of 300 officers, only seven of us were Hispanic and eight were black. Joe occasionally rode with me on patrol in those days. Few had any idea what karate was, and he was not well liked. That changed one summer evening in 1969. During a traffic stop, five men disarmed an officer and fired off a 45 pistol round at his feet and then roughed him up before fleeing. Two of them were ex-cons. Driving a 55 Chevy, they easily outran our Fords. Several times they were sighted and then lost. Joe and I happened to get behind them, and when they lost control of their vehicle, we had them. Take them out, Joe, I hollered. I dropped two of them, and Joe took out the other two. I hollered to Joe to take out the last guy, but he knew Joe, and he hollered. Joe, Indio, you know me, you know me. When Joe hesitated, I knocked the man off his feet. When the next officer arrived, the five were laying all over the street. It was a tough cop named Jimmy Baker who came up first. You guys did a number of them on them, he said. Soon other officers arrived, and each time the question was asked, what happened? I pointed at Joe giving him the credit. There began his acceptance and his reputation with Austin Police Department. As time went on, I labored to cement my reputation on the department. I have to say that I was mentored as well by the then tactics instructor, a tough, tough detective by the name of Tom Graham. Tom was about six foot two in height and weighed 240 pounds. He was a second degree black belt in judo. He took a liking to me, and about the time I made brown belt in karate, Tom was released as the police detective de department tactics instructor. He favored me to take his place over one of his own judo brown belts. Reputation meant a lot to a cop in those days. Perhaps it still does. In those days, cops carried nightsticks, and they used them frequently. For the sake of reputation, I never carried one. I was fortunate never to lose a fight. The drop back was that, like Tom, resorting to martial arts brought trouble. The same officer who got me 15 days off without pay also got Tom Graham fired. My partner, the very, very tough Jerry Day, never had more use, no, much use for that man. 
Some of my baddest fights were with other cops. I couldn't afford to lose those. If that had ever happened, I would have been done for. My reputation shattered. Shortly after I made black belt, one of my students busted up my knee. The knee was shattered and I could hardly stand on it, much less fight. In those days, the operation for a knee cost $5,000, which was a lot of money. It was not until many years later that I realized that I had insurance for the police department, which would have covered it. But in that condition, it would have been a matter of time before someone whipped me. There was someone in the department who would have cheered had that happened. I couldn't bear the thought of that. It was then, after eight years as a cop, that I looked for employment elsewhere. Prior to that, I had tested for my black belt in September of 1973. That was quite an exam, for Joe unloaded on me. Now, there are pictures of me as a white belt. Others in the picture outranked me. Nonetheless, I was the second of Joe Alvarado's students to examine for the black belt. The exam was a humdinger. The difference between me and those others in the picture was that I was hungry, really hungry. After six years, I wanted that black belt, and nothing, but nothing was going to get in my way. The problem with those other fellows is they weren't hungry, weren't willing to go through what was necessary at that time for that exam. Now, prior to my injury, and while yet a black belt, I got involved in a couple of team matches where I got to lead the team as the captain. At that time, there were only two schools in Austin. One was on the north side with Mike Usselton and Alan Steen protege running that school. Joe had his school on the south side. Those matches were exciting, and in each instance, while team captain, I got to lead our team to a win. I got to, had the opportunity of whipping up on some of Usselton's brown belts. Later, with my own boys, I put together a team. It was a good way, as I saw it, to keep interest and conditioning revved up my boys performed exceedingly well against two of the toughest teams in the state, against Joe Alvarado's team and Demetrius Havanas' team. Now, I don't know about traditional karate, traditional soto. Here is the way I see it. My followers and I have done very well without input from Japan for nearly 50 years. To adopt what we have seen others adopting from Japan would be for this team a step backwards. You will have to view this video and form your own opinion. We're not going that direction. If it is about form, my, my wife Ida was one of the most proficient form practitioners in Soto, and it was she who taught our black belts the type of form you will see in the video. In addition, she was a very tough fighter, and in 1975 became the first woman to test for black belt in Soto Karate going through 26 rounds of fighting. She was number seven black belt in Soto Karate, Texas Soto. Much of my love for karate was formed around this question. How does it do on the street? I'm not concerned about how it does in a tournament. That matters nothing in a back alley. In other words, to me, influenced as I was while on the police department, my question is always and shall always be, how is it as a self-defense mechanism and how does it stand up against what's out there now? And what is out there now? Mixed martial arts. That is what we're preparing for. My full contact team match is working along anything go rules with five points for a knockout or a forerunner of mixed martial arts. My boys couldn't handle themselves in that. And 20 years back, they would have been in the mixed martial arts. Our business is to teach fighters, not ballet. Now we are moving into a different era. I'm turning over the reins to a man I have much confidence in, Jeff Benugli. He and I have been associated as an instructor and student and as close friends since the day he first walked into my dojo in 1974, 41 years ago. I have complete confidence in him to take this art far into the future. I expect he will take control and that each black belt instructor under him will toe the line. I know Jeff. They tone the line or they're gone. I know Jeff will do me proud. In our long association together, he and I have promoted 
Very few to black belt, very few. The ranks of brown and black belt mean too much to us. And I expect he will raise the standards as well as he takes our art into the fields of jiu-jitsu and the mixed martial arts. He will see to it that trusted and valued senior instructors who have been with us for a long time, such as Samuel Toliko and the rest of my full contact team fighters, receive the respect they deserve from up-and-coming black belts. Jeff will take my style of soru, and I say my style because it differs from the Takamichi style which is coming in. He will take my style of soru karate where I cannot, and for that I'm grateful. My legacy as a martial arts instructor will thus remain intact. Thank you. Hello, let me introduce myself. My name is Sam Chilico. I'm a six dan in Soryu Karate. I first came to New Braunfels, Texas in April of 1975 from Chicago. At that time, my martial arts background included uh, some wrestling history, which I was a uh, Chicago wrestler and I won several championships in the city of Chicago. And I also earned a black belt in Kodokan Judo. I wanted to further my skills and heard of someone named Chris Lopez who operated a karate school in New Braunfels. Mr. Lopez was well respected and particularly on the New Braunfels rough west side. I began training with him in 1978. I quickly earned a spot on his full contact team and fought in every team event. We were well respected and we prided ourselves on our keen physical conditioning. Mr. Lopez was a stickler for conditioning and every one of us to this day maintains that fitness 35 years later. The full contact team, in addition to myself, were Jeff Benugli, Jesse Lucier, Jay Council, Tony Zapata, and Bill Daggett. We remain a tight knit group today and we continue to rally around Mr. Lopez. Now we hear much today about Japan and Mr. Takemichi. In the nearly 40 years that I have been with Mr. Lopez, we never heard of Japan. We knew of Mr. Alvarado because he and Mr. Lopez, he was Mr. Lopez's instructor and because we fought his boys and there was a mutual respect between our schools. We know Mr. Alvarado and we know Mr. Lopez, but who is Mr. Takemichi? I would like at this time to read Texas Soryu Karate headed by Mr. Alvarado on a certificate and promotion to Mr. Alv to Mr. Lopez. Let me read the certificate to you. Uh, before I start reading, you will notice that the picture starts off with the full contact teams of Mr. Alvarado and Mr. Lopez. This is very significant. In the words of Mr. Alvarado, when Mr. Lopez took the black belt exam in September of 1973, he threw the book at him in one of the toughest exams I ever gave. With that exam, he set the standard for every person to follow. For more than 40 years, he instilled in his students and followers the spirit of the fight, and they and their students have brought fame to Soryu Karate. On this day, the 10th day of April, 2015, 48 years from the beginning, I exert my authority as a 10th Dan, to which rank I have been elevated by the highest ranking practitioners of karate in Texas, the American Karate Black Belt Association. With that authority, I promote Chris Lopez, currently 9th Dan, to the highest rank in Texas Soya Karate, the rank of 10th Dan Judan. Be it noted that Chris Lopez is the only person I have promoted to this rank, a rank equal to my own, and I do so in full recognition of who he is. Signed, Joel Alvarado, 10th Dan, Judan, April 10th, 2015. To ask Mr. Lopez who he would want to be promoted under, Mr. Alvarado or Mr. Takemichi, he would laugh and so would we. There are only two 10th Dan's in Texas Soyu Karate, and those are Mr. Lopez and Mr. Alvarado. And until the passing of one, there will be no other. 
The next one upon the passing of one would be Mr. Jeff Benugli, and following him would be Mr. Myron Bercy. Thank you. Yeah, too.
Hi folks, Jeff Penuglia, so you karate. Texas, so you karate. What's the definition of so you karate, especially guys from Texas? It's the best of the best. And I say that because 40 something years ago, Grandmaster Lopez, which then was my sensei, Chris Lopez, who his instructor was Joe Alvarado. And by far, they were the best so you brand in the whole Texas, United States, we were the we were the king babies. We were the big dogs on campus. We'd go to tournaments and clean house. And since then, in all these years now, it's evolved to more than that. It's evolved to more than just point karate. It's evolved now to 
the striking, the full contact. It's evolved to the jiu-jitsu. It's evolved to the MMA. And I'm here to say to all Soyu students, all of you, that without it, you're not a complete fighter. Bottom line. You want to take the, you think you're going to take an MMA guy, you think you're going to take a guy in the street, that because you're a black belt, you think you're going to be able to take this guy down or kick him down or whatever the case is. But if he's coked up with cocaine, if he's drugged up, if he's been drinking a lot, he's going to take you to the ground. Chances are you might win that, but if you go against an MMA fighter, it's not going to happen. There's so many tools that they have that'll, that completely destroy a stand-up karate man. Soyu stood for the best of the best. And now, 20 years later, in 2015, Mr. Grand Lopez, Chris Lopez, has now set the standard for all of us. And that is to be the best of the best. And he has raised the bar. You have to be a jiu-jitsu purple belt in order to even go for a black belt in the game of the martial arts. And he's done that not because of he's a macho or he's going to go and tell these guys, this is what we got to do here. And, 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 and he wants all of us to, to learn how to defend ourselves the best way possible. And that's the MMA, that's the jiu-jitsu. We're a fighter. We're a round up fighter. I'm 60 years old. I compete in world competition. I won it two years ago. I'm going to go compete again as a purple belt, and my goal is obviously is to win. But without the Mr. Lopez pushing, and without his level of intensity of going to the being the best of the best, and without him taking the standard higher, I might not be too overwhelmed to go do this. But I am because I believe in him, and I believe in the product that we have, which is Soyu Karate. It's not okay to just be good in Soyu. It's not okay. You got to be great. In order to be great, you got to do great things. And that's learning everything about what a fighter is about. So to all you Soyu Karate folks out there, if your instructor's not teaching you this, then I strongly advise you to go learn it elsewhere. Get with instructors. I'm not saying don't let your black belt or show your karate student or instructor teach you, but go learn jiu-jitsu, go learn MMA. There's a lot of fantastic instructors out there and you can learn from them. So, with that being all said, Sam Chilico, Chris Lopez, Master Grandmaster Chris Lopez, Johnny Capato, and myself and about five, six other folks are going to the world, not to watch, but to compete. It's not okay to just be good. You got to be great in Texas Story of Karate. And that's it. Thank you. I want to talk about Mr. Lopez, my sensei. You know, in life, there's only a few folks that you can actually put your hands around and say they're true friends. But a sensei is more than just a coach in the martial arts. A sensei is somebody that mentors you and keeps you up and inspires to do great things. And that's exactly what Mr. Lopez has done for me and several students. But he's taken me to levels I've never been in my life. And he has given the pennant to take over Soya Karate, Texas Soya Karate in the whole old Texas world, and yet there's people fighting them. Why that is, he put out such outstanding fighters, and so did Mr. Alvarado. Mr. Joe Alvarado put out some outstanding fighters. We always competed against each other. Great competition. But I have to tell you, Ms. Grandmaster, now Grandmaster Lopez, has got the highest degree in Texas, period. And for those who disrespect him, is just, just blows my mind because he's got so much to offer. So many people about not just fighting, about the mental capacity and about the spiritual side, those three elements. So without Mr. Lopez, I wouldn't be who I am today. And I, I, wanna lo I, want, I wanna tell everybody right now, I love this man and I bow to him.
And that's it. Thank you, sir.